Good morning, Scotty. It's Paul from Air. Paul from Air. Good morning, sir. Nice to hear you. Right, I've just got some, something for Henry here. Yes. I mean, he wants to stop pensions at... Um, 70. He wants to completely stop. No NHS, no pensions, no help for anyone over 70. Once over you get 70, to... which is the biblical lifespan. The Bible tells us three score years and ten. Is that right? That's the allotted lifespan, yes. And some may live longer, but um, if God is gracious. But if he's going to take that attitude of, um, about the Bible... There's a verse in the Bible that says this. We commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Yes. In other words, so you know... Henry, Henry should not be getting any benefit. Precisely. So the same, the same rule would apply then, Paul, if you're, if you're not going to give people over 70 any help, then why should you give people who do not work, like Henry, any help, who are, who are fit and well? Yes, mm. Yes, good point. Excellent point. Yes, first class, Paul. I like that one. Right. Um, there's another thing which has been exercising me um, Th quite you. a bit, actually, yesterday and, this, and during the night. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there's, there's trouble coming. Right. Well, you've spoken a bit about this a bit before, but I found that in the States, there are people who are very aware of what is happening. They're informing people what is happening. They're watching the news. And we are months, if not even weeks, away from a major, major crisis, a worldwide crisis. No one seems to be interested in this country or preparing or informing. It's very disturbing. No. Where, where's all this come from, Paul? I mean, you, you haven't invented this then during the night. No, no. No, this um, is... I'm, I've been monitoring things for a long time. Right. And they really are reaching crisis point. Now, do, uh, but, uh, are we not uh, able to rely on Gordon Brown and uh, Alistair Darling and giants of the nation like that to sort all this out? Definitely not. They're part of the problem. Ah. They're, uh, they're taking us into it. Would another, uh, would another party help? I mean, we're going to get an election in about a year... We may get an election in about a year. Right. Well, I, 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 would, I would have thought I wouldn't be too far away that there would be an election on, say, the 1st of May 2010. Would that, that be That election moment? may not happen. Right. Um, the, how can I put this, the economy is in absolute meltdown. Um, we're heading for hyperinflation within, as I say, months or weeks. We're heading for the collapse of the dollar, the pound. It's all in place and it's all going. And no, the one no. world government and the one world banking system is just around the corner. Now, is, is this, I mean, obviously, if what you're saying is the case, then it would have been planned. Now, if it's planned, does that not make it a good thing? It's been planned, but it is definitely not a good thing. But why, why would politicians plan something that's not good for the people? The politicians that, that are running governments in the main are actually puppets. They don't really have a lot of control. And if they try to take the control into their own hands and get countries out of this, then they are dealt with. Right. But um, why, why would anybody not want what's best for the people? I can't understand that. Because there are a group of people out there who basically, all right, are, I mean, they, they would be, say, Luciferian or Satanists, but they're very, very powerful people out there. They've been guided by Satan, and they are out to dominate the world, and they are very close to doing it. Yeah, but, I mean, I can't see God letting that happen, because God is good and Satan is evil. So good always triumphs over evil. It will in the end. But, as we've spoken about before, there will be this beast who will be ruling the world for 42 months. And, as well, I say... Why, 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 why would, why would uh, uh, you know, if, uh, I'm taking your belief uh, yeah. system here, Paul. Why would God let that happen? Because, obviously, you know, God is all-powerful. He is omnipotent. And, um, you know, the devil has been dealt with through the ages. He's letting that happen because man will not listen to God. 
man will not believe the word of God, he blasphemes him, he um, goes the opposite way, he um, indulges in the, you know, the, the permissive society, adultery, fornication, murders um, children in the womb, um, allows for all the... Yeah, but I mean, I mean, surely, uh, you know, surely God is man made flesh. Uh, man, uh, man is, is is God made flesh. Jesus Christ was God in the flesh, mm -hmm. and the world crucified him, and they are still not interested in him in the main. Well, I, well, I, can't, I mean, you, you see, it's very strange here, Paul, because if we if we deeply believe in God and that system, you're now saying that God's actually letting this happen. He's yes. the sort of he's the sort of villain of the peace. So God, God is it's God that's making it happen. God's allowed these devil worshippers that you say are around to run the show. I mean, surely yes, he has, he has allowed it. it. It's part of his judgment which is coming upon the earth. Right, but if you try to get a job in this country, Paul, right, you're vetted for that job, aren't you? You're interviewed, and people make a decision. And all the way through our lives and careers, people make a decision. Now, if you end up in charge of a country, I would have thought that would have meant that you are the best person for the job, that your qualifications are beyond reproach. And that you that you you know worship the the great power superior to mankind, and that's why you're running the show. Generally, what happens? You're as running the, the show as the because the Americans see in God we trust. You you've appealed to the major to the majority of the population, and you generally do that nowadays by being an actor. You do not do that by being someone who has. High ideals. But, I mean, what, but surely, surely your training and everything. For instance, Her Majesty the Queen has got very high ideals. She has been trained since birth for the job that she's done for the last 57 years and done it extremely well. So, yeah, you know, I she, can't she understand. Has, but she's not. She's not been allowed by her ministers to uphold her coronation oath. Well, perhaps, therefore, we need to go back to the absolute power of the monarch in this country and throw the politicians out. Yes, I mean, I, uh, kings, kingship or the monarchy is, is one form of biblical government. Well, of course, you can trace Her Majesty the Queen's line right back to, to God himself. And the, the, um, the thing about the monarchy, though, again, is that the country gets the monarch that the country deserves. So it may not be so good for this country unless we have a monarch who is going to be so strong that they are going to revert back to the laws well, of the Bible. Well, let me just say to you that I got told recently that a lady had seen in a vision that Prince Charles is the new Messiah. There, there are lots of people around who are having all kinds of visions, but the question is whether it, this is the truth. Well, I don't know. I'm only, I'm only telling you what I've heard about what vision this lady had. I'm, uh -huh. I'm purely being the, the, the messenger here. There's only one Messiah, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, is the Lord Jesus Christ going to live through Prince Charles? No. The Lord Jesus Christ has a how, physical how, body resurrected from the dead, um, and and that is how he will be returning. There is there is no person on this earth. Would it not be better walking through an earthly person who knows all the kind of pitfalls of the earth? Jesus Christ knows all the pitfalls of the earth, and we have His Word. We have the Bible. Right. Well, why does He not pop back a little bit sooner and deal with the beast? He'll be popping back at just the right time, and He will deal with the beast. Right. So, so things are actually looking well. I mean, when you came on, it was doom and gloom, but you'd say that, uh, that the big picture is that things are looking well. Well, the big picture is, yes, that there will be a new heaven, a new earth, that um, there will be the resurrection of the dead, of the, the believing dead will right. um, experience eternal life. So, so everybody, everybody's coming back. Yes, uh -huh, but the unbelieving dead, right. um, they will be cast into the lake of fire. 
so... Yeah, but when you're dead, are you not actually dead? And that's kind of it, really. No. Um, there is a place where the soul or the spirit goes, all right, to... The believers go to be with Christ until the resurrection, and the rest um, go to a place of torment, which is not the lake of fire as such, but it's a kind of remand, remand center awaiting is the it, great white throne judgment. Is this not the purgatory that, that uh, the, the Holy Roman Church talks about? No, purgatory as a place does not exist. It's a fallacy. All right. You see, the blood of Jesus Christ for a believer... I have to say this for believers, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth from all sin. Yeah. Now, if you don't believe that, if you don't believe the word of the living God... Wash right, me in the blood of the Lamb, and I shall be whiter than snow. Yes, uh, and if you don't believe that, and, and take that to heart, and act on it, and th then you come up with ideas like purgatory, because you say, you know, the blood of Jesus Christ is not efficient, it's not effective enough to deal with my sins, my sins are too bad, so therefore there's purgatory where I'll be cleansed of that. Well, that's just not true, that's an insult to God. Well, why, why does nobody speak to the Holy Roman Church about this and say, could you remove purgatory from your agenda, please? Uh, the Roman Catholic Church has been um, confronted with these things through the ages, and particularly at the Reformation, and their response has been, in general, very very harsh um right so it's, it's but there are there have been some so what, right? what what you're saying is that th that the holy roman church will not take a telling they won't there have been some priests i mean one one of the very interesting priests to read about is charles chinnicky mm -hmm. who he through reading the scriptures was converted and he taught his church what he knew what was revealed to him through the scriptures. So, so are you saying that you feel that the priest is not actually a man of God? The Roman Catholic priest? Mm. No. He's deceived and he's deceiving. It's the blind leaving the blind. Right. Now Charles Chinicky, he believed he should stay within the Roman Catholic system. But they actually threw him out. And they... In, they actually went far enough to burn down the church because the, the whole congregation actually moved with Charles Chinnicky. Wow. And Charles Chinnicky actually won a court case against the Roman Catholics. Now, his lawyer was Abraham Lincoln. Who, of course, was assassinated. Yes, and yeah. one of the reasons that Abraham Lincoln was assassinated was that he, ag he angered the Roman Catholic Church by winning that court case. Right. And there's actually congression, a congressional record which um, points to the fact that Roman Catholics in the South were celebrating the assassination of Abraham Lincoln while he was still alive. They knew it was coming. What about the, the assassination? Was, was Abraham Lincoln a Catholic? No. What about the assassination of, uh, of John F. Kennedy, who was Catholic? Well, there, there was a common factor between the two, um, and it, it wasn't their religion, but the, the common factor was that they, both of them, defied these people who are going about running the world, and they defied them by printing their own money. There was the Lincoln Greenback, and under JFK, there was the silver dollar, the dollar based on silver. So what's the profession of these people that are running the world then? Are they politicians? Are they financiers? Or are they just uh, greedy men? Um, they, they are very powerful, greedy men. They're, they're out to, to run the world, to own the world. Um, it's not money is, which is, drives is, is, them, is, but power. Is this not, come with me, saith the devil, and I will show you all the kingdoms of the world? Yes. Yes, they have, they have taken this up. What Christ refused, they have taken up. So, and, and you think that we are heading for, uh, for some uh, serious financial meltdown? Yes, I think it's very close. When you say close, do you mean years? No, I mean months or weeks. Really? So the, the thing to do, right, the first thing really to do is to get right with God spiritually, to turn to God.
So do you think if we all turn to God, then this might not happen? If we were to turn to God, um, he would, he would, um, how can I say, he would be the saviour. So we all said our prayers tonight. If we all repented, if, if we all, um, basically acted on that repentance, then yes, uh -huh. Paul, I'm going to have to dash, but... I'll just, just get, go, can go, just yes, indeed. a couple of other points. Yeah, the other point go. is, get out of debt. Get out of debt. That is going to be vital. Uh, anything that you have, if, if you possibly can do it, get out of it. Pay off the credit cards, whatever. Um, what, what, what difference does that actually make? The difference is that if you are in debt to anybody, they have power over you, and they can take what you have if you cannot afford to pay off that debt. Right. What if people don't have very much and they don't have any money? Well, <laughs> this is this is the problem, and it's going to be worse because food is going to become an issue as well. Right, right. So, and the mark of the beast is around the corner, so that's the next thing. We live in interesting times. Paul, I look forward yes. to talking to you again soon, sir. Right, okay. Thank you very much. Right, bye, bye, bye now. There we are. That's uh, Paul from here. Uh, telling it like it is. Is he uh, talking any sense? Does anything ring a bell? Or is he talking absolute nonsense? Complete and utter bunkum. You tell me 01698 337 107 because everybody's got an opinion and